A scripture for this evening comes from 1 John chapter 4, verse 16. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. We thank you once again, Father God, for life. We thank you for your mercy and for your grace and for your uh, just for you just watching over us and keeping us, waking us this morning, and you let us live to see one more day on this year earth. We don't take it for granted, Lord, because we know it didn't have to be. So we just thank you for your protection, for your, all your provisions, Lord God. And uh, now we ask that you would cleanse our hearts and our minds and bless our Bible study tonight. Bless Pastor Haynes, bless the word, and pray that we all will learn something new and fresh from your word that will help us to be better people. Lord, forgive us now of our sins. Sometime during this day, we have sinned either consciously or unconsciously. We lift up our church tonight, Lord God, and we thank you for our church. And we thank you for all that you've done for Bethany throughout the years, Lord God. We lift up our worship service this coming Sunday. Pray for extraordinary service. Bless Pastor Haynes and the sermon. Bless all of our social ministers. Bless Lord musicians, choir members, the ushers, the deacons. Keep us safe, Lord, in the place of worship. We lift up our Sunday school ministry, Lord God, all the teachers and students. Help us, Lord, to teach your word, help our students to understand your word. Most of all, help us all, Lord, to live your word. We are selfish tonight. We lift up our church and step in your name tonight. Every man, woman, boy, and girl, we are called to preach your gospel. Bless their efforts, Lord. Bless your missionaries. Bless your evangelists. Everyone who declares your word. Let Holy Spirit touch and convict those who are not saved tonight. We lift up the sick tonight, Lord. Some are mentally sick, some physically sick, some are disabled, some are shattered. You know room numbers, you know conditions, Lord God. So we're asking for healing, we're asking for strength, and just bless doctors, nurses, nurses, hospitals, all the care takers tonight. Then for your children who are bereaved, for loved ones, Lord, comfort them as they go through this dark period in their lives, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for this world that you made, and we just thank you for just allowing us to live here and still claim us as your children, Lord God. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for the tremendous sacrifice you made on Calvary. You came down and committed no sins, but you shed your blood. Because that was the only cure for our salvation. We thank you for going to Calvary. And we thank you, Father God, for raising Jesus from death. Because if you had not raised him up, we would still be lost in our sins. So bless your word and help us to study your word, to read your word, and meditate on your word. In Jesus' name we pray.
folks sing a song for money. He say sing a song. Yeah. Sing a song, sister. Uh-uh. Sister Martin. Don't even. You got to give clothes. Yeah. Sister Hustler, sing it. I know my lane. There you go. I know. And my gift is to is to video or take a picture. I can help somebody else see. <laughs> Where is Sister Mac this night? Sister Mac. Good evening. She gonna chill. Nope, she ain't about to sing. Oh, you must have heard it. Oh, y'all was singing it? No, he said uh sing a song while he go to the restaurant. Really? Yes. You see how God talked to you? You usually. You usually. It's confirmation right there. Yeah. Oh, then I do the key, lucky. Good evening, uh. So we was waiting on a choir Clint? member. Look, we was waiting on a choir member coming here. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me go on and play and get on the piano. Yeah. Yes. Ooh, I didn't think I was going to make it. I had to go home and get Taylor first. Uh, that way. We went to a basketball game, leaving here about eight. Oh, she got a game tonight. It was tonight. traffic getting here. I was like, oh. And yeah, look at this one. He just slid in here, too. You fell? I told you I fell out of the car. Hey, baby. All right, you tonight. I sure don't. I got some. I got old people going. Hey, he says, hey, are you? Good. Hey, 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 and they just had some good ones. <laughs> 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 I told my guy, I ain't got no pen, I got some old pen. Go. Who's Ken? We got some more shit. There's some more people out there. They're scared to pray, man. They wait outside. Look, the one that came in here singing. <laughs> She's a songster. She's singing. Yeah. We told him he was waiting on her. See what you left last week. That's what I whooped him with. He found that here. That belongs to the church. That's when that they did. To the church. Remember when they did the um, arm of God? Yo, I thought he was in that too. He got to come off that table, I think. You could have let her in to whoop that boy. You let him have it. They ain't no use to put nothing else on <laughs> Vacation Bible School is coming. I didn't know what to do with it, so I just left it in the chair. July, right? Yeah. Okay. I, 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 I didn't want to throw it away because I didn't want to get beat up. Yeah. So, so, the thing about whenever you throw stuff away, don't tell nobody. 
But this is one, but where the rest of them? With Brianna, because I tried to give the Brianna last week. She didn't take it, did she? No. She so you tried to give her a bag. That's uh, school that too. Oh, that's the, this is supposed to be for the youth department. She's supposed to be over you. <laughs> but if anybody knows where the stuff mm -hmm. is, she ought to know. Look at You're the pastor. Look at all the people. Look at all the people there that didn't want to pray. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Even <laughs> preachers stand outside and say, we have to pray. Go put that in Mr. Go put that in Mr. Hill's room. Okay. Mr. Who room? Hill. Yeah. Mr. Hill's room. She trying to look for her son. That nigga ain't gonna be. He's gonna be here on Sunday. But two men is doing Sunday school. We're gonna do a youth department. Go on there, let me see. Wait till Brianna Take come. Phone there, let me see. There you Wait till Brianna come. Excellent. Do she know where the rest of those twins are? So don't take it up. Not now. If if she don't know what where the rest of them are, you take it up there. They might be. Good evening, Trina. How are you, Trina? Show me the stove. Let me see the stove. Oh, good. Huh? Turn yeah, that's the nice room up there that she keeps stuff in. Well, she got a yeah, she got a room right she there. keeps the stuff. But her room is locked. I can't see it. I didn't see the rest. I was in there today. I didn't see them. Not those two. Go over to the left. Right there. But she didn't know where the stuff is. I don't know. You can't put people over okay. stuff and then take them over. Oh, that's not How was your day, Trina? That was good. That's good. What's going on, Brother Hardy? Not good. Brother Hardy, but you waiting outside so you didn't like, so you wouldn't have to come in and pray with us. I prayed on the way. All right, make Clint feel bad, man. We we come over here. I've been here since eight o'clock this morning. We for him to come pray with me, and this Negro he he gone. He prayed on the way. I pray for you too. Yeah, that's how you made it through the day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I know what the lesson is about tonight. <laughs> I see why the Lord will be teaching this lesson. Good job. Everybody had a good day today? Yes, sir. Yes. Good to see y'all. Good to see y'all. Y'all already beat the day crowd. Mm -hmm. We have about six doing the day with me. I don't know what they were scared of. Well, I know what they're scared of, but I ain't going to tell you. You're not going to swim too far. You know. We're going to talk about the power test today. The power test. Father Lawrence starts off talking about his daughter playing with her dogs, had them all lined up in the row, and she's steady giving them orders, telling them what to do. <laughs> <laughs> you do this, do you do that, you do that. Dogs. And you notice she's the baby girl. They had a dog. And she was uh spend more time with the dog than any time. But all the times with the dog, she tell the dog what she wanted him to do. You go here, you do this. And then he realized she's doing that because she was the baby. Everybody in the house telling her what to do. Mm. She didn't have nobody to tell what to do, so she bossed her dogs, and she bossed the dog. His point was that innate in everybody's character, there's this desire to want to be in charge. Yes, sir. Want to exercise power. Want to exercise power. This desire to exercise power. That's that's the power test. Exercise power. Look, look at um, Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. Most of the time when we think about top, well, if you're late, maybe you're going to have your phone messing up as soon as you get in here. <laughs> Most times when people think about power, they think about it in the negative. Think about it in the negative. But, but power is not always necessarily is the negative. Not the negative. It's, it's, sometimes it's in the positive. 
that's a long, of course, that's a wrong kind of desire for power. There's a selfish mm-hmm. content when it comes to power. But it doesn't necessarily have to be that. Anybody got that verse yet? Can we say what? Sir? Chapter 3, verse 1. Verse 2 of the <laughs> This is a true saying. If a man desired the office of a bishop, he desired the good work. Read that again, read that again. This is a true saying. If a man desired the office of a bishop, he desired a good work. Thank you, Lee. If a man desires the office of a bishop, desires, if a man wants the office of a bishop, he says it's a good thing. As God taught me, he says, well, what is bishop? That was a leader in the church. In fact, he was a leader of several churches. He says if he desires a position of leadership, let me, let me paraphrase. If he desires a position of power, God says, Paul says that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> the last thing I want to hear. It's on my phone. Phone messed up. Phone messed up. Y'all must be hanging out. I'm going to tell your wife. Hold on. Let me cut it down because that was the last thing I was listening to at the gym. <laughs> okay. It's not wrong to want power. God. Well, look at, look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, 28. <laughs> Seven, eight. What's up? One. One. Three. Never cease to amaze me, boy. Everybody. Brian, I'm glad you came tonight. Show up at all. He said, What you want to do with this? Do you know anything about that? You seen that before? You ain't nothing to do with that? <coughs> <laughs> you were looking at the one of the big kids or something y'all had that. That's between her and her household. <laughs> and uh, you know the youth probably used that in their like, presentation. <laughs> you don't know about that part though, huh? I don't know where they got it from. It would have been upstairs if they had. Don't, don't take it where she said from the hills. Room. Poor communication. Poor communication. Gross misuse of power. (laughs) (laughs) Read that for me, somebody. 128. 27 and 28. His wife didn't know the chapter. He don't know the church. We in Genesis 1. Oh, I know where it's at. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis, first book of the Bible, man. Uh I know that. I'm just knowing from chapter 1 or 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air. You understand that? It's not just chapter 28. It was chapter 1, verse 27. Yeah, that's what I thought. And over every yeah. living thing that moveth upon the earth. So then the Bible says God is the one who created man. How did he create man? He created man in his own image. Who's the most powerful being in the universe? Man. Mankind. God. 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 Did I say man? What did you say? You said being. I said being a person. I can't even say person. Yes, I could. Yeah, God is the most powerful being in the universe. So if he if he made man in his own image, he must make man to possess some power. God created the whole world, the whole universe. And when he got through, guess what he said? He says, I want man to 
to have dominion over. Uh, in other words, I want man to be in, in charge, control. Yeah, yeah, in, in control, in cahoots, so that so that God must not have a problem with us having power, since He is powerful and He gave us power. So God. Power is not a negative thing with God because he, he gave us power to use over our assignment. In other words, God says, I'm going to make you steward right. over my creation. And since I'm going to make you steward over my creation, I'm going to give you the power to exercise. I'm sorry. I'm going to use the power to execute the assignment. Anybody got a problem so far? Y'all got a question? I see, I see smoke coming out of people here. Yeah, I do, but I'm, I'm going to wait. No, come on, man. Come on. Get no, no, it's not about, it's about, you know, like you say, mate. This is really not about this. It's a creative male and female. And you know, this is a question y'all have asked. Was Eve the only, was the first woman on earth? I mean, <laughs> no, nah, I mean, it's a book that says it's in Lila, Brother Lila, or something. <laughs> ask that question again. I see why you don't want to ask that. Yeah. See, the problem I got is number two, two things I got what you just said. It's a, a you all don't know who's the first female. Right. Because the Bible tells you he created man. Then he performs an operation. You don't see it in chapter one, but you see it in chapter two. Was it chapter yeah, two? Where he takes man's rib and creates woman. Woman out of the womb. Man out of the womb. Woman. Okay. Then you. So the Bible tells me the first female was. Then you proceed to tell me about another book. <laughs> I know the Bible is but I was And what I want you to understand, don't ever ask me nothing about nothing now. about another book. Okay. Because <laughs> the, the first book, the most powerful book, the most informed book is the Bible. Now I do understand. When Moses was writing the Bible, he was from Egypt. You no know, Egypt. Is the, that's where black folks mm -hmm. pretty smart. In fact. Historically, the most wise, the most wisdom, the most technical, the most advanced society was Egypt. Now, these white folks don't want you to know that, <laughs> but Egypt is the crown of, and, and, and Moses was raised in that culture. So it wouldn't be a, a far stretch to say Moses had some other sources in his hand when he was writing. I don't have no problem with that. But this is what you got to look at. What Moses writes in the Bible is divine, in, divinely inspired. So God allows him to take all this other mess that's out there right. and pull from those other sources that which is really true. Because you do know who's the first being on the face of the earth. <laughs> Adam's the first man. God is the first being. God is the source. So whatever source you want to want to refer me to, it may be after Moses, but it's not after. It's also after God. The supreme source is God. So you know, I got to go. I got to go fuss with some other folk. You know, who mixed up. But like I tell folks, you know, hey, don't come to me with no, no other source. Well, you see, sir, and any criticism you got for the Bible, you can multiply it times a million and use that same criticism to whatever source they want to tell them. Do you feel me? Yeah. Okay. Christianity, while well, you got me talking on it, is the only religion, the only religion that has an answer to man's not being able to keep the moral code. All of them got a moral code. 
All of them. Muslim got a moral code. Confucius got a moral code. All of them got a moral code. But there's not but one, I'm calling it religion, on the face of the earth that has the solution, solution to man's not being able to keep the moral code. Because out of all the moral codes that exist in the world, nobody can keep any of them. <laughs> they talked about most Muslims and how strict they were, but you know what happened to them. The Honorable Elijah Mohammed had more babies than my brother. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The law allowed. He's supposed to be in the standard. I ain't trying to waste on man. I'm just saying that all of them have the moral code. You can have a great moral code, but nobody keeps them. I mean, you know, they do this, that, and other, and they want to say, we better than you. Y'all right. better than right. I mean, that's a whole bunch of crap, because the final analysis, we all fail at all of them. The only one religion, I'm calling religion, but it's more, more spiritual movement, that has a solution to man's failure. And that's Christianity. Got the answer to our failure. That's Jesus. Or JC. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. See, don't we the only one say, well, I know y'all ain't worth squat, but I got the answer. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Thank you. That whosoever, whosoever trusts in him, yeah. whosoever have faith in him, whosoever depends on him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. And we're saved not because we're good. We're saved not because we're morally better. We're saved because Jesus paid a price for us that we could not pay for ourselves. You got that? Don't ever give me no rep my toe. Right. <laughs> uh, I was just really going to know how to defend you that. Done, that you have done better than taking that sword and just stuck it in it. <laughs> just stick it in my heart. Stick it in my heart. See, I can take that from some members, but see, you one—I can see you one of my stronger members. And that question just yeah. <laughs> look, your chest just sneaked in here when I wasn't looking. Y'all yeah. see our chest? Y'all y'all brought chest up to snow? We talking we, about we the power tonight. chest? Yeah. We deep the night, y'all miss me. <laughs> we talking about the power test. Y'all got me? It was looking scary at first. Any other questions? That was a good question, you know. <laughs> got me a chance to go off on y'all. Yeah, <laughs> I stirred you up. I just was addressing the concern. Right, right, right. right. God, God created us to have power, and He wants to give His power to us. But he is looking for those who can be trusted with it. Mm. Let me go back over there. We said power. We said power. God gave power. God says power is good. But then all power possesses are not good. Mm. Okay. See, he's saying, he's saying, God, I like that word stewardship. The power says, learning to steward your God-given authority. God has given us power. God has given us authority. The question is, how are you going to use it? Are you going to get in trouble with it? Mm. Are you going to be mature about it? Are you going to use it for good? Are you going to use it for evil? Are you going to be humble? Or are you going to be selfish? Are you going to use your power to help others? Or are you going to use your power to help yourself?
Questions, questions. Y'all follow me so far? Yes, sir. This is the prior test. I'm using the word stewardship. See, I like that word stewardship. Why? We said God gave us power. That's part of what God has given us. Well, we are stewards of God's power. How we handle the power of God determines how well we meet God's requirement of stewardship. But you know what I mean? I can't say I'm handling my stewardship as it relates to my power test and I'm not doing anything. Some people want to use God, especially when we start talking about humility, as an excuse not to use my power. But if I'm not using the power which God has given me, it means I'm not being a good steward. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. In other words, I can't just be neutral. <laughs> well, power is bad, because that's what folk, folk, folk want to say. No, power is not bad. Power can be bad. Yeah. But the only way power is bad is if you it's use bad. it wrong, mm -hmm. badly, abusing, mm -hmm. negative, selfishly. Selfish. Yeah. So if I use power the wrong way, yeah. But I can't, I can't, not, <laughs> see, what, what a lot of people do, especially yeah. Baptist church members, Baptist church members, with the real, I don't know, I'm not that kind of person, and I'm doing, that's not my area, you know, and so I don't want to do that. Mm. And they use that, as, that's their lame excuse to be idle. Yes. My point is, you can't be idle and please God. Yeah. Yeah. You can't be idle and be a good steward over the power which God has given you. Yeah. I think I ought to tell y'all, God has given all of us power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Y'all follow me? Yeah. May come to a surprise to some, it may come to a surprise, but God's blessing can be just as much a test as tribulation. Why? Because blessings involve responsibility, or responsibility requires character. Ah. What are you talking about? God gives tribulation, or he allows tribulations, trials. We talked about tests. Remember we talked about pride tests? Y'all remember that? Yeah. Anybody yeah. sleep? No. Uh, well, do you know that it's not just trouble that tests us? Our blessings mm -hmm. test us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Power test. That's the power. That's the power test. Genesis chapter forty-one. Genesis chapter forty-one. Genesis chapter forty. Somebody read verse one, verse eight and nine, verse fourteen. Genesis chapter forty-one. Eight and nine. One. One. Eight and nine. And fourteen. Chapter forty one. Eight and nine. No. Verse one. And the morning. Sorry, In the morning, his mind was troubled. So he sent for all the magicians, magicians and wise men of Egypt. This is this is he talking about he. This is when Pharaoh has a dream that he can't interpret and he sends for all of his oh, uh, yeah. wise men so called yeah, to, interpret. to interpret it and they could not oh. read one again in the morning his mind was troubled that's Pharaoh's mind was troubled so he went for all the magicians and wise men of Egypt Pharaoh told him his dream but no one could interpret them for him 
Okay. Then the chief cup buyer, buyer, buyer said yeah. to Pharaoh, Today I am reminded of my shortcoming. Who's the cup bearer? Y'all remember the cup bearer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the person who Joseph interpreted his dream mm -hmm. uh -huh. along with the baker. Y'all remember? Yes. Mm -hmm. And he says, okay. Well, y'all gonna see Pharaoh when y'all see Pharaoh in the middle of me. Okay, that was year 15. Now here it is two years later, year 17. And homeboy, homeboy just decided, oh, now, that's in verse 8. <laughs> now I see where I messed up. <laughs> and, and you should all understand, he's not doing that so much to help Joseph as yeah. much as to help himself. Because yeah. he's trying to get in good with Pharaoh. Read it again for me, baby. Then the cup, then the chief cup buyer said to Pharaoh, today I am reminded of my shortcoming. Pharaoh was once angry with his servant, and he imprisoned me and the chief breaker in the house as a captain of the guard. Each of us had a dream the same night and each dream had a meaning of its own. Now a young Hebrew was there with us, a servant of the captain of the guard. Uh, we told him our dreams, and he interpreted them for us, giving each man the interpretation of his dream. And things turned out exactly as he interpreted them to us. I was restored to my position and the other man was impelled. So Pharaoh went to Joseph, and he was quickly brought from the Verse 14, end. verse 14. Yeah. Verse 14 says, now, now you already told him that. After Pharaoh heard what the chief cup bearer said, then, verse 14, what 14 says? So Pharaoh went so Pharaoh sent for Joseph, and he was quickly. He was what? He was quickly. Brought. He was quickly. Mm -hmm. On the line, quickly. Mm -hmm. Pharaoh sent for him, and he was quickly. Go ahead. Brought from the dungeon. When he had shaved and ch changed his clothes, he came before Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream. And no one can interpret it. But I have heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. I cannot do it, Joseph replied to Pharaoh. That's verse 25? Huh? That's verse 25? No, 16. 16. 16. All right, go down to 25. To 25? Yeah. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh are one in the same. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good pounds are seven years, and the seven good heads of rain. Time out, time out. My bad. Go back to 16, read it again. 16? Yeah. Okay. I cannot do it, Joseph replied to Pharaoh, but God will give Pharaoh the answer he I did. can't do it. I can't do it. But God. But God. I can't do it. Y'all follow me? Mm -hmm. All right, let's back up. Okay. We say God is the one who gives power. <clears throat> I didn't say that yet, but I should have said it. God is the one who gives power. Okay. We say God created us. He gave us power. Power then comes from God. All right. For seven, I'm sorry. Yes. For, for 17 years, God has been working on Joseph to develop him to the point where he can. Use him. Hmm. More importantly, 
For 17 years, God has worked on Joseph so Joseph can use the power God has given him properly. Yeah. He had power when he had the dream. Huh? But he wasn't ready when he had the dream. What was the problem when he had the dream? It was I, I, I. It was a pride problem. I, I, I. It was <coughs> selfish. He was looking at you, looking at how it's going to benefit him. You, know, you got to go through the pride, you got to go through the pit, you got to go through the prison, the palace. You go through all these other tests. And now we get to the power test. Now we get to the power test. <laughs> it took him 15 years to go from number one, pride test, all the way to <coughs> interpreting the dream for those two men. He's in prison. Two more years, because the guy's when one was dead, he couldn't tell. <laughs> but the cup barrel was itself, he didn't think about nobody but himself. That's two more years. So we're talking about 17 years. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see you. I'm trying to let you see something. In the 17 years, God is working on Joseph to prepare him mm -hmm. to be able to handle power. Mm -hmm. He wakes up that morning. When he wakes up that morning, in verse 1, he's in prison. He wakes up that morning, he's in prison. Before the day is over, he's the most powerful man in the world, save Pharaoh. In less than 24 hours, she said, quickly, that's why I said quickly. They sent for, for, for Joseph, quickly. He's stanky, he got old clothes on. They quickly get him. They quickly bathe him. They quickly shave him. They quickly put him on some clean clothes and bring him to Pharaoh. He tells Pharaoh what God told him to tell him. And then he says, you ought to get somebody to put over this stuff. Seven years of plenty, seven years of famine. You need to during the years of plenty, you save up for the you need to get a wise man. Somebody can delegate, put up the plenty so you got some extra for the family. He says, Pharaoh said, you know what? I don't know nobody who qualified for that any better than you. It appears to me that you Got wisdom. It appears to me that God and you got a relationship. I want you to see something. See, you don't have to be always be a spiritual person. You have in this Joseph story several folk who sees promise in Joseph, who sees that God has his hands. On Joseph. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. Potiphar? I mean, you say what you want, but Potiphar said, man, this guy got something. He put him over his whole house. I perceive, man, when you're doing stuff, I'm, I'm got a profit. He making more money up man than life. The guy over the prison, we don't know his name, but the guy over the prison evidently saw something in Joseph, too. Because as soon as Joseph put in prison, the prison uh, supervisor puts Joseph over all of the prison. You got these two shenanigans, these two fellas, Baker and the candlestick maker. <laughs> they both, they can see that God got his hands on it because he can interpret these dreams. Huh? That you have. Gotta make sure I can leave it up by
Potiphar, Pharaoh, keep us in prison. All these men who are ungodly men, these are not uh, people who are historically known to follow Yahweh. These are people following idol gods, other gods. But all of them recognize that Joseph had a special relationship with the God of Israel. Where will be a better place? If people can see God in you, if people can recognize God in you, then God can use you to exercise his power. When God has given you his power, God will also give you an essence that allows people to see him in your life. Any questions so far? No questions? Look at uh, Psalm 62, verse 11. Psalm 62, verse 11. spoken once, twice, I have heard that, that power belongs to God. Read that again, please, sir. God has spoken once, twice I have heard this, that power belongs to God. Power belongs to who? God. Power belongs to God. God has power. And God can give power. But just like God gives power, God can take power away. away. Yes, sir. Power is not all bad. Power is, whether it's bad or, or good, is dependent on how the person God gives it to uses it. So that if God gives me the power and I use the power properly, that's a good thing. If God gives me the power and I use the power improperly, that's a bad thing. John 19, John 19, John 19. The Gospel of John, chapter 19, verse 10 and 11. So what? Gospel 19. Do you refuse to speak to me? Pirate says, don't you realize I have power either to free you or to crucify you? Jesus answered, you would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. Pilate is the big, big wheel. He's the man in charge. He is the Roman representative. He said, you know, I got power. Jesus is not talking to him the way he wanted. He wants Jesus to suck up to him. Yeah. And, and Pilate said, man, you don't know who I am. You, I got a chance to, you got a chance to talk to me. Oh, uh, we trying to have another class right there. 19. <laughs> the last thing walking in here. <laughs> <laughs> no. I was so here it is. Here it is. He thinks he all that in a bag of chips. Mm -hmm. Just like a lot of people in the world. That's what's really wrong with our world today. Yeah. You got Republicans think they running stuff. They in charge. You got Democrats think they're in charge. You got people who think because they have positions of power, they think they're powerful. Well, Jesus, look what Jesus tells the Father. Man, you ain't got no power. Yeah. All the power you have was given you from my Father. Mm -hmm. And just like he gave it to you, he come on here. <laughs> and since my Father is in charge, that means the people who gave me 
who brought me to you, they are more guilty than you are. Why? Because the people who brought them to Jesus, the Pharisees, they're supposed to be religious leaders. They're supposed to be God's representatives mm -hmm. who are misusing their power. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, well, they are more guiltier than you are. They're guiltier than you are. Why? Because they are using, they are not, well, it says this, they are misusing their power. Question. The question is not, do you have power? It is a fact. Every last one of us in here tonight has been given power from God. Oh, yes. The question is, how are you using it? Mm -hmm. I refer back to, again, that word stewardship. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Stewardship. It's not a matter of do you have power. Mm -hmm. How good of a steward are you with the power that God has given you? Are you using God's power? God's way. How do you get power? God gave to you. It's just a, <laughs> so how do we receive power? It's very simple. As with everything else in the Bible, if you want to have power, you just do the opposite of what you think you're supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> If you notice, in the kingdom of God, yeah. the rules are just the opposite of the rules of the world. Yeah. Jesus said, if you want to be great, uh -huh. yes, sir. be a servant. Yes, sir. <laughs> you want to be high, get low. low. Get low. Mm -hmm. You want to receive a lot, give, me a lot. give a lot. That the rules of the kingdom are just opposite like to the rules of the world. No. Yeah, you ought to write that down. Oh, it's something you need to remember. It's something. Make sure you don't ask a question that insults my intelligence. I got to make sure that I understand kingdom rules are not like worldly rules. And that's what mess a lot of folks. See, either I'm doing God's way, I'm going to do it the world's way. And a lot of folks choose to do it the world's way. They think that's the best way. First Peter, chapter five, verse five and six. First Peter, chapter five, verse five and six. All you folks who came here, what chapter? <laughs> chapter five. What verse? Verse 5 and 6. And another verse 6. <laughs> Likewise, ye younger, submit yourself unto the elder. Yeah, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth to proud and giveth grace to humble. And giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. All right, you young folks who think you know everything? He says, submit. Y'all know what submit means? Mm -hmm. Go on to elders. Young folks ought to listen to older people. Mm -hmm. Do this like you know everything? You need to listen to your mom. She know more. <laughs> Chastity, respect old men like Cain. <laughs> like Big Ben back there. I got, I got to respect age. He says age has with it some wisdom. What else he said, baby? Yeah. All of you be subject one to another. All right, they said, now all of you be subject one. Now look what he did there, he switched that thing. He said the young ought to be submissive to the older, 
when he says, but then everybody should submit to each other. Uh, read on. And be clothed with humility. For God resisted the proud and give us grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. For God resists the proud. For God resists the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. You don't want God to resist you. Think your Bible, hey, what's your Bible say? Same thing? God opposes the proud. No, that ain't the same thing, can you? <laughs> That's quite different. God First, resists the proud. Okay, now says God opposes. God, what well, he said, what resists me? God opposes the proud. The proud. God resists. See, resist, I could be saying, he just kind of. Yeah, he does, you know. Yeah, but not, but that, that gives it credit. He, he actually opposed. God goes against. He don't want it. God goes against. That's enough. God goes against the pride. God goes against. It's, it's, one more put it in the form of football. He says, assuming that power is football, God gives power to the running back. He gives the running back football. When he gives the running back the football, he has the power. When God gives the running back the football, he in essence says, I'm giving you the football, but I'm a block for you. <laughs> you got the football, but I'm the one doing I'm the one to make, open up the holes for you. Yeah. See, one problem I have with Emmy Smith, y'all, I'm talking about the greatest runner. He's a good runner. But Emma Smith has the greatest record because he had the greatest line. <laughs> that boy just died yesterday or this week? Yeah. yeah. Larry Allen. Larry Allen? Uh -huh. That was the best offensive lineman ever played yeah. football. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you want to talk about. Mm -hmm. You show anybody you want to show me. They ain't going to never show me anybody on film no. did what Larry Allen did. Mm -hmm. Larry Allen didn't just block. He knocked suckers down. He might knock five men on the ground. I mean, on their butt mm -hmm. in one running play. Mm -hmm. yeah. And all even they do is run. <laughs> Follow behind him. No, don't mind. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, Jim Brown, Jim Brown had Negroes <laughs> holding on to his legs, <laughs> race, waist, all that. And Jim Brown had a decent life. Now, the one I consider the best, Barry Sanders. Sanders. <laughs> And the reason why Barry Sanders is the best, better than Emmitt Smith. Because he ain't had no blocking. He ain't had none. None. No, he ain't had no None. You do highlights on Barry, and you're going to see 90% of his runs, <laughs> he, he had to reverse field, break tackles, half put a move on, shake it, shake it, hit. No blocking. <laughs> and that's a back to me. Yeah. That's a running back. Look at this, look at this, look at this. He says, God says, I'll give you power. That's the football. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to block for you. Mm -hmm. But the first time, suck it to the run. Through the hole. Next time, he might try to put a little shake on it. You know, make somebody grab some air. Hug themselves. The danger is, is when he gives you the ball, you and you to start do. thinking, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I appreciate you, God. Yeah. I mean, you've been helping me. But I think I got this. Thing. I got this now. I got, I got some moves now. Yeah. I can been, make it on my own. Been there. See what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and God, what did God say? God says, when you decide that you don't need him anymore, mm -hmm. he gets on defense. <laughs> <laughs> He becomes the middle. He becomes the middle linebacker. Yeah. Okay, now run through me. Yeah. Y'all feel me? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. You know I'm coming from? He says. He says God gives power, mm -hmm. but just like God gives it, God can take it away. Yeah. God admires humility, 
But he's got a problem with arrogance. Yes. He's got a problem with people who are selfish. You think they can do it all on their own. <laughs> think they can do it all by themselves. Y'all feel me? Yes. Anybody got a problem with that? Y'all see where I'm coming from? Power comes from God. But just like God gives you power, God can take it away from you. Mm -hmm. God gives power to the humble. Mm -hmm. He has a problem with the arrogant, the selfish, self serve mm -hmm. Wow. Any questions? Morris talks about it the time he was uh, well, talks about another leader who uh, went to one of his subordinates, understudy guy working with him, and says, uh, I have to go do something else. I'm going to leave you in charge to do the speaking for the night. And the guy says, Oh, I don't know. Uh, I don't think I'm ready for that. <clears throat> and the guy in charge says, well, I feel pretty strongly that God has told me you are the woman mm -hmm. who I should put in this position, so I need you to speak for me. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. I, I, just don't, I don't see that. I don't have it. So I'll tell you what you pray about. You talk to God about and if you can convince God that you're not the one that he put on my mind, mm -hmm. you can get out of that. God <coughs> yes. So he decides he's going to go and try. He's scared as all get out, man. He's shaking, nervous, praying. But he decides he's going to try to do it. When he gets up to teach, the nerves go away and God uses him. Oh, he's out of sight. Man. People come up shaking his hand, did a marvelous job. And now he, oh, cloud nine. <laughs> and so the next time the fellow asked him to teach, uh -huh. he, uh, he had a little bit more confidence. Still nervous. But he feels like, you know, you know. So he goes to teach the class. And he's a lot more comfortable, and he functions, and again, he receives compliments. He's been doing it a while, and he got to the point where he felt like, <laughs> I'm comfortable doing this. Mm -hmm. I can handle this. Falls flat on his face. Mm -hmm. I don't understand what happened. He said, Well, when you talked the first time, you were so afraid, but you was trusting God yeah. mm -hmm. to help you. Mm -hmm. But you got to a point where you felt comfortable doing it. Mm -hmm. And you felt like you could do it without God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. And if you think you can do it without God, mm. that's when you fall flat on your face. It's just resist. Resist. Mm -hmm. God, resist the proud. That either God is with you, or God will play middle line back. <laughs> Either God is helping you, or God's going to back off. I don't care how good you are, I don't care how successful you are, 
you always need to understand that if it was not for God, mm -hmm. you would be remembered. Yeah. Y'all feel me? Yes. Any questions so far? I got one more point I'm going to let y'all go. I was really wishing the one who was here because it reminded me when I got her to speak for the first time. This morning, in 40 minutes, I was like, There's such a thing as false humility. False humility. It tells the story of a man who spoke. First time he spoke, people complimented him highly. Say it's God. It sounds good. It's not me. It's our God. Mm -hmm. so, speak again. People complimented him. Say it's not me. It's God. God. Right, mm -hmm. right, right, right. The guy, you know, he got tweeted at me. That's what I was saying. Fella came up to him and said, "Man, that was that was good. What you did today? It wasn't me. It was God." Mm -hmm. And the guy said, "It wasn't that good." No. <laughs> Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. <laughs> no. He said, whenever he would speak, he'd tell folk, it's God. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not me, it's God. He spoke this last time, years later, and the guy told him that was good. And he told him back in response, they said, it's God. The guy responded, it wasn't that good. It was God. <laughs> Missed it. No, 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 and sometimes we forget what the what cliche it means. means. Really mean right, right. See, he's saying it's God, but in this way, that's how he's supposedly humble. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like presenting a false right. teaching facade of facade. humility. Yeah. He's saying I'm humble. He wasn't me. It's God. Yeah. But see, when you say that, if it's really God, mm -hmm. yeah. then God's gonna put his hand on it. Yeah, you're saying what I did was not me, it was God. Well, if it was really God, if it was really God, yeah. it ought to look like God had something to do with it. Yeah. But when you say it's God and it's not, mm -hmm. you're really saying what I do, I'm going to represent as God's work. Mm -hmm. But God didn't really have a lot to do with it. Now, how can that be? I'm saying it's God, but it wasn't, it wasn't really God. I didn't really talk to God about it. I didn't pray to God about it. The older I've gotten, the more I've understood that you can't, I can't preach what I want to preach. <laughs> yes, man. I got to preach what God wants right. me to preach. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And I found out sometimes what God wants you to preach ain't the most popular thing to preach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that would be the easiest thing to preach. But when it's God, you do what God says. You can tell mm -hmm. the difference. Mm -hmm. Now, you find God, when you do what God tells you to do, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean everybody's going to say it's good. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when it's God, it's not going to appear to be good to men. But God will give you confirmation. Mm -hmm. You can tell when God, yeah, you did a good job, man. Hey, man, they rolled their eyes at you. Ain't nobody going to shake your hand today. <laughs> but you plead, you did what I told you to do. And he's always going to give you a confirmation. Where do you think you're going? <laughs> the last thing you're trying to be the first thing to walk out. I got to go feed my clients. <laughs> 
Sister Bennett's already ate him. Nah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I go, go on, go on. <laughs> I don't know, I have my doubts. <laughs> so I need to make sure I'm humble with myself. I'm honest with myself about myself. And I'm honest with myself about my relationship with God. I need to make sure that I'm, I'm a good steward of the power that God has given me. Say this in our close. God, when he got through with Joseph, Joseph gets to a point where he understood God has empowered him not to help Joseph, but God has empowered him to help people. God gives power to aid people. God gives power to help his people. God will never give you power to help yourself. He will give you power to help you empower others. He'll give you power. I was, let me know, I think I got a in here. They, they were asking me to the church to give to a group that's going to help feed hungry people. I really, I really have a problem. I really get upset when people ask me to give to veterans and people, rich people, ask me to give to poor people. Now, the reason I have a problem with that, Chastity, is that I got a problem with us having to beg to take care of veterans. Yeah. When veterans have put their life on the line for us. I don't think we ought to have to beg to take care of them. I don't think churches ought to be taking care of them. I think the government ought to take care of them. Mm -hmm. If you go to war and you come back, Yes. You done sacrificed your life. You done lost your legs. Your limbs. You got mental issues. The government ought to take care of them. They sure will announce them when they do for one. Yeah. Well, they, do from, one they, they don't yeah. do that much. I yeah. mean, you know, you got a VA hospital. But the VA hospital is one of the worst hospitals in the world when it comes to <coughs> taking care of sick people. Yeah. Brother Steve was uh, a veteran. <coughs> he had cancer, cancer was in remission. But Steve get up this every year, not, not every six months really, every six months. Brother Stevens is in the hospital over here at uh, Presbyterian, I go to see him, I think it's Presbyterian. And he's, he's dying now. It might have been one over there on uh, Medical City. Medical city. He, he was he was dying. I said, man, what you just want some attention? No, I rib, I'm in bad shape, man. Cancer come out of remission. Come out of remission. Yeah, man, the state. I said, why you wait until it got so bad? I didn't know. You know why you found out the cancer was out of remission? Because Sister Stevens. Got upset with him going to the VA and made him go, didn't make him go, suggested he go to her doctor. Mm -hmm. And it's when he went to her doctor that he was diagnosed. Mm -hmm. His cancer was out of remission. Mm -hmm. Stage four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It wasn't long after he died. Mm -hmm. And that, that's one story. I tell you story after story yeah, after, story. after story. That boy, uh, James. White, Earl Wayne White. White was in the hospital every, every, once a year at least. VA. But White had said, I know you need more than VA. 
Well, why is it we claim we love our veterans so much, but we don't do anything for them? Why you want me to put my money in a jar at Walmart, and you a whole lot richer than me, but you're going to help some folk with my money, but you're going to put your name on it? Yes, sir. Ooh, my name ain't going to be on there nowhere, which I don't give a fat red about the name, but it's the whole concept. You got rich people claiming they want to help poor people. But then why don't you vote for programs yeah. that's gonna feed hungry people? Why you vote, why are you trying to support programs that's gonna help take care of the homeless? Why don't you support programs that's gonna these social programs that's really gonna benefit the poor? Well no, they ain't doing that. Them suckers been that, that sorry scamp Trump. The most money they spent, talking about don't spend money, the biggest endorsement ever taken out of government in the last 10 years was done by Donald Trump to help rich people. Mm -hmm. And they don't talk about that. The money they had for rich people. And they're telling us it's going to trickle down. <laughs> That's when Trump was in office. It's going to trickle down. Ain't nothing trickled down yet. The trickle down concept came from their hero. Reagan, he claimed he was helping rich people. That's the way to, to really help the country, give money to rich folk, and it trickled down. It ain't trickled down to me yet. I said all that to say this, is that no, no, you, when you have power, you need to use that power in a positive way. And yeah, yeah I help poor people, but I won't, would do more to point my finger with sorry rich people not doing what they're supposed to do. They're yeah, Christian folks. You're supposed to help feed the hungry, clothe the naked, but then you're supposed to get actively involved in your government to where you can take the kind of stands you need to take to show people what's really going on in the world. You got power, you got to use it. I'm close with this, I was sitting in my desk years ago. That's when you spent eight hours on that. Guy called me from uh, the fair people. He wanted to, uh, Revenue Church has always been good to give us donations so we can send kids to the Six Flags. That's why I got a problem with that crap. Six Flags. I said, okay. I said, you know what? I don't think we're going to make a donation this year. Remember, no church, y'all, this been known. Y'all we, we, one of the highest givers, most consistent givers. I said, yeah, but you know what? I'm sitting here thinking, and I hadn't really thought about it until you called. And all the years Bethany has been contributing to your organization, and you're supposed to help poor families go to Six Flags and go to the fair. I can't really put my finger on one youth in our church or in our community that you all sponsored the Six Flags. <laughs> oh, 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 no. I feel like we'll do better picking some folk out of our church and sending them Six Flags. <laughs> That way I know some of my youth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. I don't really believe in going to the fair, because the fair ain't nothing but that's what the rich folk that the sons do to raise money. Mm -hmm. rich people. Y'all like it, that's fine. That's just not me. I got a problem in this few dollars I have the rich people. Cause they don't give me too much. What are you saying? Ain't? I'm saying if you're going to have power, use the power you have to do what God wants you to do. You got power. Be a good steward over the power you have so you can magnify and glorify God. Anybody got a problem with that? Questions? Comments? I thought you were raising your hand, man. Not yet. No. No, I'm going to right now. No questions, no comments? 
Sick report. I told you I talked to Miss uh, Petaway. And she said she's going to have to have an MRI to see if she's going to have to have uh, surgery. Oh, Sister Carol, Carol Petaway said she had problems with her knee mm -hmm. and uh, she had had some kind of treatment done and reported. Now, uh, today, Sister Hunt was telling me that she's uh, talking about having an MRI put on her knee uh, so they can see any further uh, treatments if necessary. So, y'all pray for her and her knee. Anybody else? Fellas, come to me after church, and I'll tell y'all what I asked Stan, Chris, about that knee situation. No, no sick report. Uh -huh. Is anybody heard? anybody heard about Linda? Oh, Linda, she came home yesterday. Yeah, you told me I got that email. You said that she said she spoke it out Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think that somebody say that today. I did. I sure did. I know what I'm trying to say today. I think somebody at the prayer service today. Oh, uh, she, she said she was at home? Yeah, she sent me a text. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking somebody at the day session said they had confirmed that she was out of the hospital. Anybody else? Brother, I need to get the latest on Brother Evans, and Sister Evans. Uh, haven't heard any late reports on or the other folk. Yeah, the radio hit the front of the sister. She's telling me that Peggy, uh, her sister, my white member, they have taken her to her son out of town. So, so she did leave? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think she's gone. Anybody else? That was one of my faithful members, that man. A member that didn't join the church. She'd come to church every Sunday. How'd she go? No other questions, comments? Let's stand for the benediction. I'm doing the iterate. Y'all ain't thinking about no questions. Y'all trying to get out of here. It's 8.30. <laughs> zoom, zoom, zoom. Yeah, so, <laughs> I forgot to bring my coat. I was going to wear my coat. I saw that boy all crumbled about me letting me borrow my coat. I was scared to let him go get out of that truck. <laughs> you know, tell him what would have fell down on him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We know who's supposed to do the closing prayer, but Chad to pray so much, so. If somebody else wants to lead us in the closing prayer, we'll let them do it. Since the preacher came late, don't let him do it. They got the one preacher. Right? <laughs> Looking around. Father God, I want to thank you for everything you have done for us, Lord. We thank you for this prayer meeting service. Father God, we thank you for our teacher, Lord. Lord, help us to leave better than we came, Father God. We ask you today, Father God, that you enlarge Bethany's territory, Lord, that you let Bethany be the church that you want it to be. Father God, we ask you today, Father God, that you bless Sunday, Sunday service, Father God. Lord, lift up Sunday service like you've never lifted it up before, Father God. Lord, we ask you, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we ask, we, we're praying for the bereavement families, Lord, we're praying for the sick <coughs> families, Lord. We pray for every member of Bethany, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.